Okay, uh, so I guess I'm supposed to be talking about the place that we stayed at. Um, it was a VFW. Uh, <laughs> uh, when we rode up to this place, at least my van, we, we see this in like far distance, and we're looking up there at it, and we're like, man, imagine staying in that place. That'd be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we we're there was three vans, and we were the last van to. Yeah, like in the back. It was like Wendell's van, Sean's van, and then I was in my dad's van. And we're like, man, can you imagine staying in that place? I, mean, I see this in the far distance. Uh, anyhow, uh, right after we just get done saying this, we see Wendell's van like swerve into the lane, like pulling up to where we were just talking about, like imagine staying. So it was, uh, it was a pretty dirty place uh, when we got there. There was cockroaches, spiders, uh, hornets later on, I think maybe a mouse. I, it was pretty dirty. Um, we ended up nicknaming it the uh, Very Filthy Warehouse for the VFW. But uh, uh, and then that night, uh, we went to, uh, we'd go to a church uh, for all of our meals. And a lady named Amanda would um, cook us food. Uh, we had a, was it barbecue chicken that night? I think barbecue chicken that night. It was ice cold. I have no idea why. It was, oh yeah, beans too. But the chicken was cold. It was good, but it was cold. Never had barbecue chicken that was cold like that. Uh, other than that, the food was good that night. And then, oh yeah, we go to Dairy Queen. They had a Dairy Queen in uh, Beattyville where we were at. We go there quite frequently. It was like the only fast food they had. And we'd go there for ice cream evenings. That was pretty good every night. I, I can't imagine the workers seeing 30 some people come in every night for ice cream. But yeah, that's all I'm sure about that. Okay, uh, so I'm Jensen, if you don't know me. Uh, 
So I guess I'm supposed to talk about the uh, breakfast and the lunches we had, what we made and stuff for, for ourselves. So uh, the first morning, I think we was we, we had a uh, got Amanda girl Taylor was talking about. She made our meals. She was like 19, which is pretty impressive. But she did a really good job. Uh, we had a uh, yeah break we had pancakes and sausage and that actually was like pretty impressive. It was I guess Taylor said the chicken was cold, but that breakfast was good. Uh, so then we would uh yeah we ate that at the church in the morning, and then we had devotions and prayer time. Then we make our sack lunches for the day, and uh, they were just like cold meat or I guess yeah that or you can make uh, PB and J some chips and like snacks for the day. And then they sent us out to our uh, job sites, but uh, yeah, I had I had Allie make my all my sandwiches. <laughs> it was pretty helpful, but uh, yeah, it was a good time. Uh, I was just, yeah, I don't know what shall I have. Hi, I'm Allie, and on Monday in the afternoon, my group went to Rhonda's house, and um, because of all the flooding, her house got flooded, so she had to move to the top of a hill, and um, she couldn't get down the stairs very easily, so we started a ramp in the back of her house. Um, we just set the poles on Monday, and then we cut all the pieces to finish the rest of the week. So I think everyone here knows me, but I'm Andrew. Um, every, almost every day, one group went to this, it was basically like a summer camp, more or less, kind of like Camp Ileana. And the first day we went there and we took this hike. He said it was gonna be a 25 easy hike. About an hour and a half later, we come back. <laughs> everyone stung by ground bees. And uh, it was very interesting though, it was actually, um, you had a lot of cool places down there, like rock climbs and stuff like that. And there's like, you'll see in the video later, there's things called like comedy holes where like Indians like grind their nuts and stuff like that. And like they're, they're all this stuff. So it's pretty cool to see. And he, he knew all about the camp. So it was really cool. Okay. So um, on Monday and every day, I went to an elderly hometown named Arlie's. Um, and the reason that I went there every day and didn't get to see anything else, which was fine. Um, we were supposed to have a kids club, um, and well, I was going to help head that up. Unfortunately, that didn't really pan out. <laughs> um, there was not a kids club, and we didn't know until basically when we got there. But it was fine because we always got to take showers first, and you get to hear about the lovely showers later, so I won't elaborate on that. But um, every day I went to Arlie's. Um, he had had COVID a couple of weeks before we got there, and he was in the hospital. He was really sick. Um, I believe next month, well, tomorrow's August. In August, he'll be 79. Um, I don't want to share too much about him because I know there's some other kids, there's some kids sharing about him later. Um, I hope they touch on some of those things. I was hoping to go later, but I don't want to steal anything they're going to say. But he was a really cool guy. One thing I will share about him um, that I'm not sure if anyone's going to share, he could not hear. I mean, literally could not hear. I don't have a loud voice. Like, you had to shout. Like, that's where we went to the bathroom was in his house. So, like, he would knock on the door, and so like he's old, and he was still having a really hard time getting around because he was so sick. And so he would sit on his recliner with the TV blaring really loud, and not be dressed. So he had a blanket, and like you would knock and like just crack the and like shout really loud, and the whole world didn't accidentally see anything. And then you would wait for him to shout back at you, and you would go in and go to the bathroom. So that was always interesting. Um, but he couldn't hear because he was a trumpet player, and I won't, I'll let some of them say, hopefully, some of that because it's really cool. But one thing that I thought was so interesting, maybe not to you guys, but he, um, as long as I shout it, he didn't have a hard time hearing me. Um, most people know, David, I hope you don't be saying this. <laughs> um, the one day in particular, it was really neat. David I, and I were in the house at the same time. And David was like, oh, he's not going to have trouble hearing me. Because if you guys know David, he's not a quiet guy. Like, we don't have trouble hearing David. He actually had, like, he would look at me and hear David because of the differences in our voices. Like, he had no trouble hearing me. And Dustin was able to explain that to me. Like, but I thought it was so cool that God makes our bodies like that. that because of his profession and what he did and playing the trumpet and the things he did, he could hear me fine. But he could not hear David. It was just that was so interesting. Anyway, that's what I have to share. So yeah, I'm talking about the showers of like the first day. So when we pulled up, I don't know what we were expecting, but I was not expecting 
while I was there, and you guys can see it in the video, but um, it was it was supposed to be heated by the sun, I guess. It was quite chilly, but like as soon as you got out of the water, it was like sweated, like we sweat. You can hear Allie in the video say it's really hot, but I'll wait that. So that night, we went back to the church, and we had lasagna. As far as I remember, it was pretty good. Like, I don't remember it being bad. But after that, we all went with Caitlin, Luke, and Amanda to the fireworks on Happy Top for 4th of July, because it was 4th of July. But we were there for a couple hours, and then we just went back and had fun that night. Okay, so I'm Cameron, and I'm supposed to be talking about breakfast and the place I went to. But breakfast was cereal and bagels and sack lunches, and they got sack lunches. And then I went to a place that's called Jenny's, and she was this really nice lady. And all of us girls were basically standing there for a little while, and then um, even Sean and Nelson told us to go and talk to Jenny. So we went and talked to Jenny all day, and it was fun. And then we went to her garden. She had a really cool garden. It was massive. And she was just this old-ish lady. And I was like, how in the world does this lady do this? And then after that, we went back inside and watched TV while the guys worked on the porch, like the porch roof. We were just talking away, having the time of our lives. And then um, we went outside because we just felt like it. And then we're just talking still on our little chairs, just rocking back and forth. And then um, it started pouring, and all the guys were like, oh, it's like time for lunch. So we had all in it, ate lunch. And then after that, they finished everything up, and we just headed back to take our showers. Um, so, I was at Arlie's every day with my mom, and, um, basically what we did is we just did some, uh, landscaping work and everything, but the main thing that I was going to talk about was I went in, um, on one of the days of the week, I don't remember exactly, but, uh, I had a conversation with Arlie, and he started to tell me about his lifetime, and he told me that he used to play the trumpet for Elvis Presley. And I thought that was really cool because that's, he said that was the reason that he couldn't hear very well. And so like, he was shouting at me. It was like kind of scary, but it was, it was okay then. But it was really interesting to hear about what all he did and where all he went and everything. And like, he just seemed like a really nice old man. So I'm going to talk about the camp that Andrew talked about. I went to the camp on Tuesday and Thursday, and um, I got to talk with the maintenance guy's name was Troy, and it was his girlfriend's mom who actually owned the camp, and she had started an outreach in uh, Babyville for kids whose parents had gotten addicted to opioids, and so she was trying to open this camp up for them, for places for them to go in the summertime, and so... Um, she was hoping that by the end of the week that we were there that um, that there would be kids be able to come. And actually on Thursday while we were there, there were kids that came that day. Um, he had told us also like when he came, um, the weeds there at the camp were like this high and he had they had to mow them all. I mean, they were all down when we were there. So um, I think... Um, I was really glad that we actually went to the camp because um, he wasn't really expecting a lot of help from us and he just kept thanking us and you could just see that he was so thankful that he had help. And one day we came and he goes, oh, I didn't know you guys were coming back. And we said, yeah, we were told that this was the place that we were supposed to come today. And he said, I am just so thankful you are here. 
So I was really blessed by that. So I'm supposed to give a perspective of a decently tall man on the 10 showers. So these showers aren't very tall at all. So they're possibly, so you got these bags that you have to hang up on a hanger and the, the hanger is probably like six, six, I would say it's probably six and a half feet. And the bag is about two feet. So you're working with air just already about four and a half feet. And then you had to have a hose attached that was probably, I don't know, three feet long. But I mean, you can't really work with gravity, like bring it up here. So I, you basically had to squat down to use the shower. And so if you went after people, which most days you did, there's a slippery floor and you're sitting, squatting down on this slippery tent floor. And boy, oh boy, did <laughs> <laughs> One day I was, I, I think it was, it was Monday or Tuesday, it was whatever day, I was squat down, was going to stand up, and I slipped hard. <laughs> this tent barely held me within the tent. <laughs> so I decided I'd like to share that. Okay, well I'm going to talk about the supper we had Tuesday night, which we had tacos for supper, which were really good, and then Amanda made those as well. And um, after we ate, we went to Dairy Queen again, and we got ice cream, which was always really good. And then we stayed there for a little bit, and then after that, we went back to the VFW, and we had like, we played a lot of music. And I think that night, we might have stayed up to like 12, just like playing music. So that was really fun. That was like one of the best parts. So on Wednesday morning, we had French toast and a little bit of bacon, not a lot. Um, I know some people didn't get any at all, so, but it was very good. I was lucky enough to get some. But so on Wednesday, I went to Rhonda's and we finished building the ramp behind her house. And then, so us girls were kind of helping, but not a lot. And so then she came out there and she was kind of talking to us. And I think dad was like, you guys just go in and talk to her. So we went in there and she talked. We just kind of listened. And I think we listened to her talk for like four hours or something like that. It was a long time. But she had a lot to say and it was really interesting. Okay, my name is Carson, and I'm supposed to talk about Jenny's on Wednesday. So after we ate dinner, I believe I was at Rhonda's uh, Wednesday morning, and after we ate dinner, we had to go to Jenny's to finish up uh, uh, building that porch that they were working on the day before. So well, some of us that wasn't with the previous day just went in and talked with her for a while, and and that was a good time. Um, she was a really nice lady. And it was just it was just a blessing to talk to her. Okay, I am talking about um, our group. We went to uh, I think it was George and Holly. I think was their name. We went to their house and we did some work in the house. But I was with uh, Wendell Tamer's band, so I'm throwing a little bit extra here. Uh, me and David had a really great time singing hymns in that band, and we had the whole band sing hymns, so that was really fun. Um, but yeah, back to George and Holly. Um, they didn't have they didn't have very much. Um, their house was was pretty poor shape. Um, the people that I worked with, I worked with Jameson and Aquila. We worked on some of their studs out in there. Um, I don't know if you want to call it like those little. It's like an enclosed patio type of thing. Um, but like the the wood was just rotted through. I mean, it was it was in bad shape. And then some of the others, they did some drywall. I know Cameron did some drywall with Dustin, and Wendell was uh, patching a hole on the side of the house. It was pretty big. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was eye-opening just to see like houses in that kind of shape um, here. You don't really think about it much 
um, in America, but um, there's a lot of work to do. And then, yeah, that's where I was on Wednesday. All right, I'm David. I'm the loud one. Uh, uh, so I'm talking about the tent showers again. Uh, so how they worked, there were like two different rooms, and there was like a separator in between. So one area you can like keep your stuff, and that's where you change, and the other one you shower in. I don't think any of us knew that until like Tuesday or Wednesday. So both sides had like water just sitting everywhere. Um, and it didn't have any good drainage. So water from like Monday was still there on Wednesday and Thursday. It was really disgusting. Um, but yeah, so we had to, we got water from this big tank that was supposed to be heated up, but it rained every day besides Monday during shower time. So the water was very cold. And then we'd fill up f five gallon bags and we had a nozzle. And yeah, like Jason said, like you'd have to bend over pretty far down if you wanted to like clean your hair and stuff. So uh, yeah, we did that and it was just really, really gross. Uh, we made it. Okay, I'm supposed to be talking about um, Wednesday night then for supper, the VFW members then had, they wanted to actually have like, uh, start to have like people there and like hosting people there and we were actually the first ones there um, that was kind of kind of exciting but um <laughs> <laughs> then um yeah so then for supper they had uh they grilled hot dogs and hamburgers which we were pretty scared because there was like mice and stuff we found around the food so that was kind of scary we didn't know what was going to be in the food but it all worked out fine um uh, yeah, and then I, actually later, it was pretty cool, the members were actually really nice, and um, later I think one of them's wives actually came in and cooked some cookies, and yeah, it was a great time. And then after that, we had our jam session, and that was like probably one of my highlights from the trip was just uh, praise and worship nights, that was really fun, and we would do uh, all kinds of dances and stuff, so. That's cool. Okay, so this was Thursday, and Thursday morning we went to a little cafe slash inn. It had like a little hotel in connected to it. And they like, basically the cafe part specialized in chocolate more, I would say. But they also had coffee and it was really good. We all got some coffee. And they also had like desserts that looked really good. And the inn part was really cool, like the hotel, because each of the rooms were like themed for a different like tourist attraction or like place like one was Paris and one was like New York and so that was really cool we didn't get to see them but like we saw pictures so it was really cool and then when we got back to like the the little church that we ate at we had cereal and bagels all right so I'm gonna talk about um after getting coffee, we I went to the camp and um I raised my phone. But we pretty much just painted, repainted the uh, building stuff. And I got to repaint a uh, picnic tip, which is pretty fun. And then um pretty much I went on a small blow up the roof. <laughs> so that was kinda of scary, but it's okay. And then um after that it was kind of a short day because we were going to go hiking. So yeah, we ate. So on Thursday, I was at um, Arlo's house, and there was a guy whose name was Ron. He was um, he helped us. He um, he cut up trees for us, and we would just take the branches and put them in like brush piles. And um, so that's what we did like in the morning. And then we had lunch. And after lunch, we went in to talk to Arlie. And like while we were talking to him, he was just like, he was telling us how much he appreciated us being there. Like how thankful he was that we came to help him, which was really cool. So 
So I was supposed to be talking about the, there's a guy named Jonathan, if he was, the house was actually pretty close to the, the church that we ate at for, uh, for the breakfast and dinner on Sundays, but um, his house was, uh, his house has seen better days, um, but whenever we got there, it was, I think that we was talking to I was talking to Jonathan for a little bit, and he said it was built back in 1909, 1901, something like that, 1907. And what had happened was there was a storm that came through, and it tore a huge hole in the roof on the inside of the house. And every time it would, any time it would rain, it would leak water inside the house. And we cut up in the hole a little bit, big, uh, a little bit bigger to see what was actually going on. And what we found was rotten wood, mold, and it was it was basically it really wasn't all that good. And but we did we did what we could do, which was to him I think it was kind of making a mess of his house. But um, we tried to do what we could in the short time that we had there. And, I think they actually did get that. The next group after us did get that put back together. But it was it was, it was pretty rough. Okay. Thursday evening, after all of our jobs and our showers and everything, we went on a hike that like our three weirds were telling us that we should go on. So we went on it, and it was really fun. And it lasted about an hour or so. Um, it was really pretty. We took sky lifts, like this one. We went up the hill to like the mountain top of it. And then um, it was like a natural bridge, so we got to be on top of the wall. Me and Jason and Shakira and Alan got lost. <laughs> and then um, after that, we came back to the VFW and we had a pizza party. Um, it was from like a local and and then after that, we had a jam session, and we sang for hours. We went to bed really late that night, too. And we just sang all kinds of songs and things. And I was probably like, jam session. Okay, so I was supposed to talk about Friday. That was the day that we got to come home and we were all ready. We were tired and didn't get a lot of sleep. Um, but we got up early Friday morning and we went to the coffee place again. They all, that was a highlight for them. And so we went there and then we drove, I think about an hour and a half or something like that to Bucky's, um, which I don't know if any of you guys have ever been there, but you'll get to see it on the video after we share here. Um, then we went to Louisville, ate at a Mark's Feed Store restaurant. Then we went to Bass Pro Shop and headed back here. I think we got back here Friday evening about 6 o'clock. And so it was a great trip, and I just want to thank you guys. I know several of you ladies um, texted us with verses and encouragement, and so I just want to thank you for that. Okay. Um. I'm supposed to share a little bit about Pastor Vern, and um, I'm going to read just a couple verses because before I talk about him, in Mark chapter 10, it's when James and John wanted to sit at the right and left hand of Jesus, and the other disciples, they didn't, they didn't like that much. Um, verse 42, so Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. I read those verses because Pastor Byrne exemplified that. He was such a giving person. 
And the church that hosted us was a Presbyterian church. I don't know much about a Presbyterian church. Um, I just didn't know a lot about that. But come to find out, he was the pastor of that church, and he wasn't a Presbyterian either. He had came from, I believe, Methodist background. He had came to that area and had found this little church that basically had just went down to about four or five people. Him and his wife started going there, and he had pastored some in the past. And they asked him to be their pastor, and he said, well, you guys might not like what I have to say. Uh, but they wanted him to go ahead and, and be that and fill that role, and he did. He consented and just started focusing on community and just started focusing on outreach and helping the community and helping the people. And it was him and his wife that actually had the shower tent set up at their house in their yard. And we would come out there and just invade their property and do our showers. And um, he was just such a kind man. And just a tidbit of information on him, um, I got wind of the fact that this guy was um, a baseball player in his day. And those of you that know me know that I'm a baseball fan. And um, so I thought, I'm going to ask him about that. Not in a proud way, but when I asked him, some of us guys, we were there one night and we asked him and he started telling us. And so he was drafted by the New York Mets out of high school back in the 70s. He could throw 100 mile an hour in the 70s. And he was drafted by the Mets. He made it as far as, I think, AAA. And I won't tell you the whole story about that. But um, anyway, just a wonderful man, just showing the love of Jesus to the people in his community. I was supposed to talk about the um, people that were in charge of the mission there. Luke, um, and he was a young man that is a band teacher. He's back on. And he was in charge of all the construction sites, keeping the people moving with that, getting the materials there. And Vernon was also involved with that. He would I mean, Luke would call him in and say he needed 10 to guys to work on the job. Vernon would go after him and bring him out and take care of a lot of the finances of it, too, from my understanding. Um, so that was, that was Luke's job. And then Amanda, I know several of you talked about her. She was 19. But she did a really, really good job of cooking 32 people in this boat. She did really good. It's for sure overwhelming for her. She had people walk in. I know after the first one, we were all really nice. <coughs> it was a big crew. So she had a big job. And then was the uh, young lady that was in charge of it. She was the head of the street. She was the, the overseer. If you had any questions or any problems, she was there. She did a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we didn't see, so I'm not really sure what her job uh, fully was, but she did a lot of stuff behind the scenes that uh, that we didn't see. Um, I'm going to go back and talk about Jonathan's place a little bit. Jonathan's place was the easiest way for me to describe it was a disaster that I would have ran from as a construction guy. I, I would have I would left that. It was beyond to live in. Children, there were, there were little kids in the house. Um, his life itself was was a wreck. Um, lots of personal issues and things, but his ex wife, kids that were still in the house, took the time with him. So that was a great stuff. Um, when we took, they had corrugated metal on the ceiling outside. We tore it off, 
Set with us after we worked all day trying to better in place. He's kind of upset with the fact that uh, water was all over his house and spring water. That all had to come out better. I think Luke can learn to talk to him and be understanding of it. But uh, we have no idea how people would have lived without seeing him. But also, kept in mind in our and this is not a vacation. It was a good reminder for us of how we All right. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, when we first got there, there was a lot of talk. People were asking me and some of the other leaders, are we going to stay here tonight? Like, there was, I think if we took the phone, it would probably been pretty unanimous that we're going to get to a hotel somewhere. Is that pretty? I think I heard a lot of that, but we talked about it. And Nelson in our room, I think the girls' room did as well. And so it was too late to go away work tonight. We, we had a few cans, we sprayed a few things down, but um, we each had prayer in each of our rooms. And we, I think Nelson actually led prayer and asked, that God would take our minds off of it, protect everyone from getting stunned, hit, whatever. And and the Lord pretty well took care of everything. Like we, there wasn't a whole lot of talk about it, but we didn't think much about it. I, I want to kind of commend all the kids and parents. Here. The kids kind of just moved on. There was some, there was a few just laughing, talking about it, and stuff. But for the most part, we moved on and we made do with what we had. There was no talk after that day about going somewhere. There's really nowhere else to go anyways. Not there. <laughs> we did check. Tamara checked for some hotels. <laughs> if they were all outside outside entrance hotels, I'm not sure how you feel about those, but I know what my wife thinks about that. That was pretty well the end of that. But on a serious note, we prayed in the kids really just moved on and everybody made do with what we had and focused on why we were there for the people. And also then on Monday, one of the things I did, I went with Sean to a job site. Then I came back with Luke and we stopped at Hardware Store and I bought a gallon of some kind of spray, defense spray or whatever. And I went around the whole inside of the BFW. I had to move beds and everything around and sprayed all the bottom of the walls. It took me like an hour to 15 minutes probably. So it got pretty strong. Spray did so. I was, yeah, it stung pretty bad after a while. I couldn't smell much for a while. It was funny after that night. We was um, right now. We were sharing that night during the well, like we always had like a debriefing of the day. And Luke, his favorite part of the day was he walked into the room when Wendell was spraying, and he Wendell said, "I think I'm high on this spray." <laughs> Yeah, I was I was getting pretty choked up. Was kind of plugged up. And Luke Luke actually his nose is running and he was all stuffed up. And about ten minutes after we left and we kind of cleared up. I just want to thank everyone for their prayers and support. And 
I mean, I appreciate each and every one of the kids who uh, allowed love every single one of them. And they, they did really awesome this week. And we are very thankful for them. That's all I have. You guys have anything you want to add to the video? Yeah, we have a video, and I think it's about 19 minutes long. And I know if, if you see the clock, it's going to go past just a little bit. So if people need to go somewhere, we won't hold it against you if you get out. But we're going to have them uh, show the video. Hopefully with what we shared, you guys can kind of see a little bit more and it might make a little more sense to you. Um, I want to also echo with what Wendell said. You parents, and I know there's a lot of the parents here tonight from with our with our youth group, and you, you can really be proud of your children because they they did really well. They always do and they just adapt so well. Even that first night when we pulled up there to that old building, it wasn't, it was, you know, we, we make it sound terrible and we had a roof over our head, but it was an old building and when we got in there, there was bugs, there was spiders, there was cockroaches, there was hornets, there was, and then, you know, then here you are, you're down in Eastern Kentucky in the hills, immediately people think, where are we? Are we safe? Where are we at? Are we, we were out of town, we were up on a hill out of town and, um, so it was just that, um, I think it was just that period of adjustment. And God, I think, just was testing us. And I would echo, too, that I'm, I'm grateful we stayed there because I think that's where God wanted us, and it was fine. By the next day, people were, I mean, these, this group right here, it was just like you flipped the switch and they adjusted, and they were just, everything was fine. So thank you all for being here. Enjoy the video. We are headed out and the church came out to see us off. We had special prayer. Everybody's loaded up and now we're going through the thing here and saying hi to everybody. See you guys. See y'all. See ya. Thank you. See you guys. See you all. Pray for us. Okay, we arrived. We got a stand in an old VFW building. We'll go inside and take a look at the facilities here in just a bit. Okay, this is the girls' dorm, and they got set up in here, and the boys' dorm is just down the hall. Okay, and this is the guys' dorm. This is what it looks like. It's a little warm in here. We haven't figured out how to cool it down in here yet. Okay, we are in the basement of the Presbyterian Church. It's supper time. Got some chicken, some beans, some salad, some corn. 6.30 Monday morning. By the way, happy 4th of July, everybody. Happy 4th. And uh, we made it through night one. Uh, had some bugs, some spiders. Girls heard some noises. And we had a little episode here in the far corner. Uh, this man right here. <laughs> so about quarter after two this morning, Andrew, who sleeps in that bed right back here in the corner, he jumps up and uh, he's just like a wild man. He's, he's looking for a way out. <laughs> And anyways, he gets out somewhere out in here and he realizes that he's just dreaming. So he turns around and he's going back to bed. Sean, who's laying here in this bed, he flips his phone light on and he thinks that Andrew's done spotted a rat or a spider or something. And so he's shining and trying to figure it out. And so we had a commotion, but it all turned out fine. And... As far as I know, Andrew went back and crawled in and went back to sleep. That's how it I never remember it yet. All right. This is Monday the 4th, and it's Pancake Day. Let's go. Cars, is it good? We're at a camp called Camp Pinecrest, and... 
we are doing some painting trying to make the exterior look a little bit better we had to clean that chimney off with some wire brushes now they're painting it looking good over there Brayton and Jason we're in a little cave well not a cave but an opening under this rock and we actually just had some people get hammered with some ground bees um, just about everybody got hit I think except for Brayton and, and Carson and myself and I think this gentleman up here hey you say yeah. that sound say but yeah so you guys doing okay doing okay Bree yeah. all right you doing all right Nelson? I am vlog on a vlog there you go <laughs> this is really amazing Okay, so Caleb is sitting here by this little invention. And Troy tells us that these are actually called hominy holes. This little indention's in the rock where the Indians actually ground their nuts and berries and whatever. Maybe their corn, I don't know. There's another one right over here. Uh, we had a good day. And um, you guys all did really good, by the way. So. Thank you so much for that. God bless you. We are at Pastor Vern's, sitting in this nice little half circle. Getting ready to use the shower. Shower one. Shower two and three. So this is where we shower at. And the bags are filled with water. They heat up in the sun, which is right over there. On this tank right here. And then you take one inside. And you have a shower. Here's some of our youth. This is over toward the vehicles and I think they're going to do some fireworks out here tonight. place so we're trying to put a little um, roof over top of this little entrance right here so uh, hopefully it's going to look a little different here after a while the ladies here have been keeping each other company sweating away slaving away all forenoon and now this afternoon but they're having a good time of fellowship which is great that's the important things in life so carry on ladies check this out Progress has been made. You can see uh, we got our trusses set. Okay, it is raining, and so we're not going to be able to get a shot with everybody. I'm out here trying to keep this camera dry, but we're almost done. Not quite. The shingles are on. They're doing a little flashing, but there is the little porch. Looks good, guys. Great job.
coming through the food line. What all do we got there, Jameson? We got some French toast, scrambled eggs. There used to be bacon there. Oh, yeah. Some yogurt, some bagels, cereal. The, the bacon probably went like candy. Yeah. You started, somewhere upside you, like, you got to like write and sleep. We had a good time last night. We got back to our uh, bunk, to our dorm. And everybody's getting some breakfast this morning. Okay, good morning. This is Wednesday morning. We're out here at a gentleman's house that had a lot of bushes growing up. People have been working here a couple days. This is our third day. I also understand that you could not get into these doors of this shed back here. So they cleaned that up. I think this is like a little makeshift fireplace here. So this here's already been cleared out, which had some thorns in it. And here's our crew. It's a good crew. And this is Dave. Now Dave is a female dog. Um, but Dave nonetheless, kids gave him that name, I heard of that name. And a uh, friendly little dog, too, by the way. Audrey mentioned that this dog is going to basically be lost when, when we quit coming out here because he is the neighbor's dog. But this is our gang, and we're going to be doing some more laboring of love. And look, we're missing one back there. There she is waving. Ron's coming down the ladder. They cleaned out some gutters because we just had a rainstorm. You probably hear the thunder yet? We had some lightning strikes that were pretty close. Popped really good through here. Out here by the road, it's really open. We got those uh, little bushes, trees, shrubs, whatever they were, trimmed out of there. Um, so it's looking a lot different around here. And the rain has really cooled it off. And we're up here eating lunch. And Cammy just washed her hair from the spill over on the gutter. She thought it would be a great place to get her hair washed, and so she got that done. Lunch good, guys? Yep. All right. Okay, this is Wednesday evening, and we're staying at obviously at this VFW uh, building, and we have some fine folks here that have supplied a meal, which this is what we had. And I want to point some people out. So here's Pastor Vern and his wife. If you guys would just raise your hand. Thank you so much. And I want to point out Amanda down here. Wave. And Caitlin. And Luke back there. All right. You guys have all been great. Thank you so much to everybody that's put this on for us and for giving us the facilities here to stay in. And the showers at you guys' house. When we get thanked for showers, that's a big deal. <laughs> So they're playing a game called Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. And these guys, I think, are playing Euchre. And we got some people hanging out here visiting. People over here playing Rook. People over here playing maybe some video games. I don't know. Allie doing some grading. And we got some people over here doing some crafts. And Evan eating some snacks. This is Thursday morning. 
There's some happy ladies <laughs> with their coffee and a happy man with his coffee. Yeah, we'll go take a peek inside. Is it good? This is what it looks like in here. All right. We have made it to the get on ramp. Looks like there goes some right there. Hey, girls. Happy ride. Where are you headed? Up there, somewhere. The natural bridge. Enjoy the ride. Okay. We're seeing some familiar faces. Yeah. Okay, this is gorgeous. I mean, this is just so pretty. And this turns over here and gets a look at this bridge, the natural bridge. How bad you don't throw this water bottle off right now? We are on the bridge, looking back to where we were, out across this beautiful view. Great. And this is the bridge itself, the walkway. This is what it looks like. Okay, so I'm about to go through the little crevice to get to the underside of the bridge, and it gets pretty narrow. Very narrow. Here we go. That's the little pathway we came down. This is the underside of the bridge. This is what it looks like underneath. There is a baby fawn down there. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a little deer in there. See its little white spots? Right down in there in them weeds. This is Thursday evening. We went to that uh, natural bridge, and we got a little late for our showers. So we got some pizza in, and it's really good. A little place called Hilltop Pizza down here. We actually even took some showers here, some of us guys did, to kind of help with the little shower tents because we were backlogged with trying to get 32 people through the shower tents. Did you enjoy the pizza? <laughs> this is Friday morning and we're loading up. We're loading up and getting ready to head home. There's the driver. <laughs> Hey, got a word, anybody? We're loading up, and we're going to go actually have some coffee with the Experience Mission staff. We're back out at the coffee shop, and people are kind of saying their goodbyes to the staff here. They were great hosts as we was down here doing our mission trip in Kentucky. Well, we stopped at Bucky's in Richmond, Kentucky. It's amazing. All of these gas pumps out through here. There's a bunch of pumps. This is inside this place. It's massive. It's quite a place. Okay, we're stopped here in uh, around Louisville, and we're eating at Mark's Feed Store. So the food has started to come out, and the people are starting to eat. Is this lunch or supper? What is this, guys? We're not quite sure. Yeah, it's just food, right? Yep. Good, Taylor? Yep. <laughs> All right. You guys haven't gotten yours yet? All right. Oh, now you're getting it. Okay, we made a stop at Bass Pro Shops. 
And so we're checking this place out. Actually, we've already been in here for a while. So we're probably getting ready to head her out here in a bit. Point her back toward Berea. You ready to go home, Tyson? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. We thank God for keeping us safe, giving us all a great time. And uh, we're back here at the starting point. So, praise the Lord. Okay, has anybody got any announcements? I don't want to keep anybody any longer. Does anybody have any announcements before we close? Okay, let's uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for, once again, for the program, Lord. Uh, it's been a few weeks ago since we were down there, Lord. Just, it's a good reminder and refreshing time, Lord, to, uh, to uh, go over and uh, think about the time spent there. And we want to thank you for the, again for the safety, Lord. For bringing everyone back home, keeping everyone safe. Thank you. Just thank you again for this evening. Be with us through the remainder of this as we go into another week. Protect us, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.